Hi friends, here I am showing you some glimpses of divinity in the womb. Our scriptures expounds that humans are divine beings that have taken an earthly form. Is there any science or evidence to support this? Well, the answer lies in the images of the growing fetus in the mother's womb which can now be visualized with high resolution ultrasound scan and 3D illustrations. Lord Vishnu is the personification of eternal multiverse that exists forever. The connection between divinity and earthly beings is highly apparent within the human fetus as it progresses through various stages of development. From conception till birth, ultrasound scans show an uncanny resemblance to the ten avatars of Lord Vishnu which also depicts the theory of evolution. Each phase of pregnancy represents different avatars and their qualities which will be discussed throughout. Up to eight weeks, the baby inside the womb was called embryo and from ninth week onwards it is called fetus. It should be noted that the earlier stages of pregnancy the embryo resembles those of animals and the transition occurs at around 9 to 10 weeks of pregnancy specifically represented by Narasimha avatar, the half man, the half lion. After this stage, the fetus takes on a much more human-like appearance which correlates to later avatars of Lord Vishnu. The cavity of uterus is egg-shaped which simulates that macrocosm. In the beginning, all that existed was void and formless. The same void is noticed inside the cavity of the uterus and creation begins here. The word avatar comes from Sanskrit which means incarnation and it refers to when God manifests himself in an earthly embodiment. Though Vishnu's earthly incarnations include many avatars, 10 of them are considered to be the principal avatars and these are discussed here. Lord Vishnu is one of the trinities or trimurtis. Among them, the role of Vishnu is that of sustainer. As Vishnu is always depicted as reclining on a serpent named Adishesha, the fetus is always seen with a floating cord around itself. While interpreting the ultrasound image of the fetus to pregnant mothers, one can see the dynamic changes and features which the embryo exhibits while simultaneously showing amazing similarity to the different forms of Vishnu. We are familiar with the sequence of appearance of Vishnu is in line with evolutionary theory that is, from a lower being such as fish to a higher evolved being. It also depicts the evolution of consciousness or the ability of beings to mirror the consciousness. It is observed that not only the physical characteristics of Lord Vishnu avatars are inherited by the fetus, but also the qualitative characteristics that define the avatars such as courage, chivalry, strength, playfulness, love, compassion and wisdom are inherited. Malsi Avatar is chosen by Lord Vishnu to save humanity and sacred Vedas from the great flood of Satyuk or Satya era in the Vedic timescale. Vishnu informs Manu, the great king and a devotee, that the world would come to an end by means of a huge flood 
in seven days and the need to build a large vessel to protect all life forms. Vishnu then directs the vessel with seven sages, seeds of all plants and trees and one each of male and female from all species in the world with him. The Malsya guided the boat to Mount Himavan, the present day Himalaya and kept it secured there until the flood receded. Vasuki, the serpent was used to tie the boat to the fish while the storm raged outside. This is the uterus with the fluid filled sac inside the cavity. It is called gestational sac. This is where the embryo grows. This is seen at 5 weeks. The fluid filled sac represents the cosmic ocean and the embryo signifies malsia, that is the fish. The first evidence of pregnancy in the ultrasound is the gestational sac. Few days later, the yolk sac appears. At six weeks, the embryo is seen. Now, limbs are not yet formed, but the body stock is seen. Here, the brain and the head is rapidly developing, becoming prominent and the caudal and rear end becomes tail shaped which begins to resemble the fish. The initial appearance of the embryo is like a focal thickening. It is seen along the periphery of yolk sac. The embryo is attached to the yolk sac with a rope like structure called vitaline duct. The yolk sac contains blood elements, nutrients and primordial sex cells. Let's see the ultrasound textbook description. Around 6 weeks into gestation, that is almost 2 weeks after missing the periods, the ultrasound will reveal an elongated white structure inside the fluid filled cavity. This is the developing embryo which resembles the aforementioned fish. So, as explained in the Puranas, we can depict this embryo stage as Matsyavatar. It is reasonable to imagine the fluid in the gestation sac as the ocean, the vitiline duct as the serpent Vasuki, the yolk as the Puranic vessel full of life. Cardiac pulsation can be seen which is evidence of life. Now we can see the 3D picture of yolk sac which resemble the resected portion of the vessel. According to scripture, the fish is attached to the boat-like structure. The yolk contains all the genetic materials and it represents the seeds. The growing mount of placenta is seen in the ultrasound images akin to the mount Himavan. To which the Puranic boat bearing life clung as the flood waters lashed around it. Nowadays, the stem cells found in the placenta are used to develop various human organs. The stem cells found in the placenta allude to the seeds of life found on the boat from the Puranas. These are the various views of embryo resembling fish. Lord Vishnu whose embodiment is in the form of a turtle. This avatar is associated with turning of the ocean by Asuras and Devas to beget the nectar of immortality. According to the scripture, the Mount Mantara was used to turn the ocean 
with the serpent Vasuki as the rope tied around the mountain. The mountain, being tremendously heavy, began to sink down the ocean floor, so Lord Vishnu incarnated himself in the form of a turtle and raised the mountain on his back, thus stabilizing its descent. Here in the following ultrasound picture, we can see that the fish-shaped embryo has transformed into a broad turtle-like structure with mountain on top. The visuals are similar to Kurma Purana, where Vishnu comes from the depths of the ocean to raise the mountain. The cord symbolizes the serpent Vasuki, while the embryo resembles the turtle. Here the limbs are not fully formed, and the limbs are present, thus simulating the appearance of a turtle carrying the mountain on top. The next incarnation is the Vara or White Boar, which is the third avatar of Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu took on this incarnation in order to kill the German king Hiranyaksha, who captured and carried the earth to the bottom of the cosmic ocean. Lord Vishnu, as the god of protection and sustenance, descended in the form of a white boar and raised the earth gently lodged between his two tusks. In the presented ultrasound scan images, taken around 8 to 9 weeks into pregnancy, the embryo resembles the image of Lord Vishnu in the form of boar bearing the earth. The earth, with its 75% water content, is noticed in the present stage embryo. Let's see how this is described in our ultrasound textbooks. As the embryo develops, we see certain normal anatomical structures which are physiological in nature that disappear later on. There is a fluid filled space in the back of the head which is called rhombic kephalon. This represents the water bodies on the earth. This structure will contribute to ventricle brainstem and cerebellum. This is a normal structure in the development of the brain at this stage. The body stock of the fetus represents the bore. The big head with the fluid filled space represents the earth with its water bodies. This is colored black in the images. This finding is seen around 8 to 9 weeks of pregnancy right before transforming into next avatar. At 8 weeks, the fingers and toes are formed but are still web shaped. Eyelids are formed now, suggestive of higher animal than before. Narasimha is the fourth avatar of Lord Vishnu and is defined as half human and half lion. In Sanskrit, Simha means lion, Nara means man. This avatar is associated with the story of Hiranyakashya, the Jaman god who was given a boon by Lord Brahma. As per the boon, Hiranyakashya could not be killed by any weapons or any being born out of natural process. He wanted everyone to worship him, but was upset that his own son, Prahlada, worshipped Lord Vishnu. As per the Puranas, when the Jaman god tried to kill Prahlada 
for his disobedience, Narasimhavatar emerged from the pillar and killed Hiranyakasya by disempowering him using its claws, thus maintaining the conditions of the boon. Narasimhavatar is portrayed as a lion faced character with bubbles at the level of abdomen. Here, the ultrasound picture shows a disproportionately big head, suggestive of an animal, a lion, with the logo portion similar to a human being. At this particular stage, the intestine is seen outside the abdominal wall, symbolic of nursing Havata. Ultrasound images around 9 to 10 weeks shows the fetal bubbles outside the abdominal wall of the baby, that is the protruding mass of fetal intestine. This characteristic of a herniated gut becomes prominent in 10 weeks and this is a normal physiological finding. The mass will resolve itself by the end of 11th week as the bubble returns to an intra-abdominal location by next stage. Note the ultrasound picture of fetus with bubbles outside and later with intestines back inside as the baby matures. Babies start developing soft hair called lanugo hair. This is typical of womb stage which can be compared to the mane of the lion. Toenails and teeth are developed now. Lips are longer than before at 10 weeks. Though Vaman Avatar is the fifth avatar of Lord Vishnu, it is the first form with morphological similarities of a human being. Vaman is characterized by his small physique and the avatar's objective was to establish goodness over the demon's authority. At 12 to 14 weeks of pregnancy, the embryo is already transformed into a fetus where it takes the shape of a complete human being. Now, it is possible to identify all the features of human body. We can see all the organs from head to foot, limbs, abdomen, four chamber heart, spine, genitalia, fingers and facial features. We can also distinguish the sex of the fetus at this period. As portrayed in the pictures, this is the smallest form with all the structures and organs of a human being. The dwarf or pygmy shaped human being is about 9 to 10 centimeters in length and weighs around 90 to 100 grams. At this stage, the neck bones are not yet strong enough to hold the head. So, we often observe the fetus in a slouching position, that is, head bent down, similar to Vaman, gazing down on Mahabali as in the Puranas. Parashuram, which literally means the axe-wielding Ram, is the sixth avatar of Lord Vishnu. He was born in a priestly family, but possessed immense physical power with all the instinct and chivalry of Kshatriyas, the warrior class. Parashuram is considered Chiranjeevi or immortal and has always fought against evil and stood for survival. It can be deduced that the human instinct to fight against evil, unrighteousness, 
etc. may be acquired by the fetus during this period. This is the period in which the fetus perform somersault movements because the space inside the womb is large relative to the size of the baby. This phase of active movement is recognized by the mother around 16 to 18 weeks. As reminding Parshuram's incidents with mother, the first kick of the baby is experienced during this week. Now the baby weighs around 200 to 250 grams and is strong enough to kick around a sensation that is transmitted to the abdomen through the uterine musculature, enabling the mother to sense the kick. Now we can see the kick of the baby. In this period, the small bones of the fetus starts ossification, which means bones becomes hard and strong. With its weight at a mere 200 to 250 grams, the fetus displays its athleticism inside the womb as Parshuram did with Kshatriyas. The fetus moves, spins, turns over and plays with the umbilical cord. During this period, baby shows the characteristic similarity with sixth avatar along with structural resemblance. As per the legends, Parshuram was the founder of Kalari Paitil, an Indian martial art from Kerala. The ultrasound scan show fetal movements with upper and lower limbs similar to the Kalari Paitil postures. All the body parts are used for defensive and offensive movements with the Kalari Paitil discipline. Now, the fetus with a clenched fist is seen here. Unlike in previous months, where the fingers are open as a sign of blessing Mahabali. The fetus continues to show this dynamic behavior up to 20 to 22 weeks of pregnancy. The next and the seventh avatar of Vishnu is Ram avatar. At 24 weeks of pregnancy, the fetus has grown even larger. Considering the proportion of the fetus, the water content, that is the amniotic fluid, within the womb is less. Therefore, it cannot perform somersault movements anymore. Now the baby is positioned upright. At the kick with the limbs is more pronounced. The character of the movement perceived by the mother also varies as the baby grows. Lord Ram is often represented as standing figure with bow and arrow set in his hands along with cure on his back. Similar visuals can be seen in ultrasound images taken at 24 weeks of pregnancy with the cord seen in front of the fetus representing the bow. Ram avatar is personified as more civilized, mature and perfect. As depicted in the portraits of Ram, the baby is often seen with hands above the shoulders as Rama fetching or propelling the arrows while waging battles to rescue the sages and later against Ravana. Now we can see the scan images with hands holding the cord or hands near the shoulder ready to take an arrow from the cure. Now the baby has become big so it is not possible to capture full length of the baby. But the position will be like this.
concept of Amsh avatar that is partial avatar or Purna avatar which means complete avatar. The letter containing all the qualities of divinity. Krishna and Ram are supposed to be Purna avatars. I would like to believe so and attribute this quality of Purnatva as I view the activities of fetus during this period. Here in the ultrasound images, we see different segments of Krishna's life represented such as Alila Krishna, that is baby Krishna in the leaf, sucking on the big toe or standing Krishna with the murali in his hand. At this stage, the fetal scan shows the legs in a crossed or bent position which is a popular way of depicting Krishna. In this phase, we can see the baby's senses getting matured, responding more to external sounds, vibrations and light. The center for memory and emotions are laid down in the growing brain. This is a prelude to next avatar, Buddha, who practiced and taught the methods to attain higher states of consciousness. Regarding ninth avatar, there is a historic debate about the identity of avatar, whether it is Buddha or Palram. Now I would like to believe Buddha as the ninth avatar as I see the ultrasound image carried out throughout my years in Puri Jagannath Temple, Amai Temple and Mukambika Temple, Buddha is depicted as ninth avatar which is another substantiating claim. In their books, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Jayadeva maintains the same view. Garuda Puran 8th chapter also mentions Buddha as ninth avatar. So now it is logical and chronologically too correct to think Buddha as the ninth avatar as he precedes the Kalki avatar which appears at the end of Kalyu. Ultrasound images at 32 to 34 weeks into pregnancy show the fetus in a sitting position similar to the classic Buddha posture, which the fetus adopts throughout the stage of pregnancy. By this time, the baby is no longer floating in his private pool because the free space in the womb was much less due to the growing size of the fetus. Space restriction also forces the baby to adopt the fetal position with the arms crossed and legs bent at the knee. This is the time where the baby initiates breathing movements, albeit intermittently. Since the baby is getting its oxygen from the placenta, Breathing is not necessary. However, it starts practicing breathing techniques, which helps the lungs to develop. This workout for the lungs encourages the cells to produce more surfactant, a protein that is essential for the maturity of the lungs. These breathing movements of the fetus are comparable to Buddha who practiced an unique form of yoga in order to attain enlightenment. This is the renowned Anapanasati Yoga which emphasizes the benefits of long deep breaths with mindfulness while inhaling and exhaling. Most babies have mature lungs by 36 weeks of gestation. Premature babies born before 36 weeks encounter breathing difficulties and often need intensive care. We are aware of ICU admissions, 
four premature babies. At around 32 weeks of pregnancy, the fetal pupils constrict and dilate and detect light entering its eyes. Buddha devoted his ascetic life to practicing and teaching the attainment of inner light, an illusion that could be interpreted as the symbolic representation of Buddha, the enlightened one. With the departure of Lord Krishna, the Kali Yuga or the Dark Age began and this period is characterized by lack of true devotion and reverence to Vedas, which are replaced by empty rituals. To raise the consciousness and to enlighten the world in such a time, Vishnu incarnated and took on Buddha avatar. Along this period, baby is having REM sleep, that is rapid eye movement sleep, which means the fetus is dreaming. That's the ability to experience different cognitive states. In other words, it reflects the development of consciousness. This is another analogy in terms of Buddha. Kalki is the last and the final avatar and is supposed to appear at the end of Kali Yuga, after which a new Yuga or era begins. Towards the end of the pregnancy, the fetus is at the end of womb life and is getting ready to battle through the pelvic cavity to emerge into a new existence for its worldly pursuits. I would like to interpret this as fully matured fetus getting ready to go through the trials of labor through the birth canal. During last weeks of pregnancy, the bones of the head, that is the cranial bones mold and undergo subtle changes in order to become accommodated inside the pelvic cavity for the passage to the outer world. Like Kaliuga, the journey is not smooth sailing, but definitely challenging. Uterine contractions during labor squeeze and push the baby down through the pelvis. The baby also twists and turns while helping to wriggle out of the birth canal. This journey was arguably the longest journey for the shortest distance a human being encountered in his whole life. Similar to the catastrophes we see in Kaliuk, Birthing is so challenging at times that the fetus may get jammed or arrested within the birth canal. An episiotomy or deliberate incision or cut made at this point helps the baby exit without further trauma. Many times, instrumental delivery is opted. This again resembles Kalki avatar who go forth with a blazing sword. With science and technology advancing assiduously in this era, we see humanity is pushed into a higher plane of existence at the spiritual and material level than it has attained before. Example, exploring other planets, space excavations. At the spiritual level also, we can see a breakthrough in consciousness. So here 
I have addressed some of the synchronicities and similarities between the developing fetus and 10 avatars of Vishnu. With this illustration, we can attest that the fetus in the womb was mirroring the cosmic principle and is spiritually coded to be divine. I consider every pregnant woman as the cosmic mother being the co-creator of the universe. Thanks to the advancing scientific technology that enable us to know more about the anatomy and physiology of the fetus and hence more parallels can be drawn upon in this regard on daily basis. Once we are born into this world, we have forgotten our divinity in the Maya matrix and this is a reminder for our oneness with the divine. It is also a realization that we have gone through different avatars which means we are divine beings and we need to express this divine qualities whenever the demons and miscreants in us operate and rule over in our daily life. As Krishna stated in Bhagavad Gita, Yeda Yeda Hi Dharmasya Klanat Bhavati Bharata Apyutthana Dharmasya Tadatmanam Shrijam Yaham Paritranaya Sadhu Nam Hinashaya Chadushkrutam Dharma Samstava Narthaya Sampavam Yuge Yuge This divinity in us will incarnate every now and then and hold us together in oneness.